Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Storytime with Adam Cole, baby. It doesn't matter how elite you are. It's like missionary position every single night. The truth is the truth. Along the way, I unlocked something truly evil. Free the Titan! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of appropriate ages. Bend the knee and prepare yourself as Nerdities presents to you Wrestling With Ourselves, the home of the reigning, defending, podcast and internet trios champions of the world. Thank you. I am co-host of this show, one third of those champions, the alpha of alphas, the lord and master of the universe. I am Justin, as always joined by my hetero life match. Co-host of this show, the god of the dad bod, the king of chaos himself, Kyle, rounding out this trio, <laughs> is Giggles McGee over there. That's me. That's not ben. you. That's not. That's, ben, I was ben. talking about her. Your monikers, sir. You are the Van Dam of the body slam. You are the saint oh. of cynics. The squishiest of the squished lords. Finn, the baking championship wrestling champion of the world. Good champion again. You know, Both champions. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that turns out on the ninth when real people vote on it. Yeah, on the ninth, ninth, ninth these, bro. 15-inch pythons. You can't now, bake without them. Prepare yourself to bask in his glory. The greatest mind... Of all professional wrestling podcasts. He hails from parts well known. He is the mouth of the East. God's favorite <laughs> atheist. <laughs> I was about to say the South because it's been a little bit. Because <laughs> you're running on fumes? Yeah. Who you be? I be Mike. And our million dollar mensch himself, the young boy. Of the group. <laughs> the, the young but old <laughs> the, Joe. The young but not that young compared to two other members of the show. The young boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably the best <laughs> intro for the show's had in a while. Thank you. Joe's <laughs> young boy, is he? I'm a real boy. Okay. <laughs> let's roll into wrestling, shall we? Yes, let's. SummerSlam happened while we were away, uh, and those of you who were, like, scratching your heads, like, where's the wrestling show been? Uh, pay attention, pores. It's once a month, and that's all you get. So, sorry, not sorry. If you would have bought more fucking Wrestling With Ourselves t-shirts available at nerdies.myspreadshop.com, uh, we would give you more wrestling shows, but you didn't. So... But you still can but you can. You can get on a hat. It looks real sweet on a hat. The hats are awesome. Insane. So here we go. Yeah. SummerSlam. Logan Paul versus Ricochet. Uh, Logan Paul defeated Ricochet via pinfall because, I guess, whatever. I don't think the Pauls are legally allowed to lose matches anymore, no matter where they're competing. Probably not. Uh, I think uh, I think they, I think it's just because they continue to just undermine Ricochet's effort as one of the best wrestlers on the planet. I agree. 
Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. Cody Rhodes went over on Lesnar, and something magical happened. Uh, they say the the beast's heart grew three sizes that day. Uh, apparently, just Brock wanted to be Brock about it, and he shook Bro- uh, Cody's hand and gave him a fucking hug, and then just he fucked off. So after the match, like. In the arena, he gave him a hug. Yes, I actually in the footage. ring. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like some dark moment. It was it was during the pay per view. It was during the pay per view, but like no one knew it was happening. Like yeah, they, they had one of those quiet moments in the ring yeah. where they're just kind of looking at each other, like like kind of mutual <coughs> respect. Did they have like real heat to the story going into it? It was. I mean, it was the thing. He stopped Cody from getting his his the title from Roman and stuff, and you know, I mean, the, it wasn't a story that was really pressed. No, but it just kind of happened. You know, respect. Uh, there was a slummer, slummer slam, the Summer Slam Battle Royal because, of course, there was which LA Knight won. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fuck. Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. This was Ronda's last match with the company, and she asked for Shayna to be the one to take her out. It was MMA rules, air quote. Uh, punches and kicks were thrown. Uh, they looked pretty crisp, though. And uh, Baszler defeated Rousey via technical submission. The Intercontinental Championship was on the line. Gunther defending his title against Drew McIntyre. Gunther would defeat McIntyre via pinfall to retain his title. Seth Rollins would put his World Heavyweight Championship on the line against Finn Balor with Rollins winning and retaining his title. Asuka versus Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair for the WWE Women's Championship would see... Belair defeat Asuka and then just moments later Io Sky would cash in her money in the bank and beat Bianca Belair to become the second new women's champion that night. The WWE Undisputed Universal Championship Roman Reigns defended his title versus his cousin Jay Uso in tribal combat rules. Uh, don't expect me to answer what tribal combat rules are because it just seemed like a hardcore match. Uh, and they didn't make any kind of specification to have the match step, you know, stand out. No, it wasn't like Punjabi prison kind or of anything like that. I, yeah, it was whatever. That's lame. That seems like a waste of opportunity. They could only use like coconuts and kendo sticks, nothing else. They have to use one of those sticks with shark teeth in it? Nope. So the outcome of the match is a lot to process. Jey Uso looked tremendously strong in defeat by nearly overcoming both Reigns and Solo Sokoa. The idea of Jimmy Uso turning on his twin brother is peculiar and could trend into a ridiculous soap opera. The match preceding it was typical bloodline stuff, slow at times, very compelling at others. Uh, w- uh, give WWE the benefit of the doubt in a long arcing story that is usually fantastic, but everybody was a little butthurt with how it went down with brother turning on brother, brother, brother. Brother. Hey, what you gonna do? Brother. Uh, so that is that. Let's jump over to AEW for a second and look at the card for this weekend's all-in event over at the Wembley Stadium. Wembley? Yeah. I forgot that was this weekend. Yes. We have MJF defending his title versus Adam Cole, baby. Friend versus friend. Uh, FTR... Defending the tag titles against the Young Books. Despite something we're going to get into in a minute. Then Hikaru Shida defending her title versus Soraya, Tony Storm, and Britt Baker in a Fatal 4-Way Women's Championship match. Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, and Kota Ibushi versus Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Konosuke Takeshita. Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay. And in a fun twist, because I don't think anybody's done it yet, but Chris Jericho will be playing himself to the ring. That's right. His band Fozzie will be there. And Jericho will be singing his own entrance music live. Nice. I like Fozzie. Yeah. I don't think anybody's ever done that before. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised knowledge. it took him this long. Uh, and he is taking on the Will Ospreys. John Moxley, Claudio Castanoli, Wheeler Yuta, and three to be announced competitors will be taking on Eddie Kingston, the Lucha Bros. Minus one of them, because Ray Phoenix has a visa issue, so he's not able to attend. Uh, Orange Cassidy and the Best Friends in a stadium stampede match. Swerve Strickland and A.R. Fox will be teaming up against Sting and Darby Allin in a coffin match. CM Punk versus Samoa Joe for the Real World Championship. 
That's the belt that Punk is carrying around, even though MJF is technically the champion. And and in a pre-show match, Aussie Open, the ROH World Tag Team Champions, will be defending their titles against MJF and Adam Cole. They're doing double work? Double work. Mm. It's gutsy. Yes. It means they're going to lose. Well, that was... Uh, yeah, but that was... Uh, um, that was the thing. Yeah. That MJF likes Adam Cole so much that he's willing to wrestle twice in one night. Yeah. Because MJF doesn't wrestle twice in a night. Okay, let's get into some news. Cash Wheeler was arrested for a bout of road rage. Uh, and he showed a gun off during this whole incident. Registering is uh, a serious charge? Yes. So, find, or he's, he's got plenty of fines, I'm sure, out of this. They did not take his, his uh, passport, though, so he is able to attend the show. However, Tony Khan is still looking into the situation to see how bad it is, and we shall get updates as we get closer to Sunday to see what is going to happen if this match is actually going to take place or not. Kyle, thoughts? Um, I would anticipate it still taking place because otherwise, what do they do with the box? They're not going to take the box off of all in. No. Um, who do they replace? Who do they replace FTR with? Because they're not going to have Dex wrestle a single, and CM Punk is already in another match. I mean, I'm sure that they will figure things out and maneuver things around. However, they Tony needs to. Lacey Evans. Are, hmm? are you saying that you think that means that FTR is getting taken out of the match completely? I don't know what to think. Uh, I I, th- I think th- I think what will end up happening is there'll be some like behind the scenes fine or some kind of suspension post all in for cash, and then for a period of time, Dax will be wrestling. As a mid card single, like he was for a little while, anyway. My only problem with most of this is it kind of just gives away the fact that they're probably going to take the belts off of FTR. Which then, what do you mean? they're not if 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 he's going to suspend him, they're not going to keep the titles. Um. Yeah, but Tony does... He, he likes tournaments maybe more than I do. So I could see him just having them drop the titles and then having someone do a tournament and then when FTR returns... Yeah, but I don't, I don't know if he's going to be like, let's have this match, and then I'm just going to strip you the next week. If he's going to do something, it's going to be this week. He'll He'll maneuver whatever he has to on the card. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's not like he hasn't had somebody retain just to drop the next week. CM Punk did it. Yeah. But that was for injury, but that was, still. Yeah, it was an injury issue. Speaking yeah. of CM Punk, a bit of uh, issues in the locker room with him again. Apparently, he has been banning certain wrestlers from uh, Collision. He doesn't want Jack Perry there anymore. Uh, Ryan Nemeth, uh, Dolph Ziggler's brother, is not allowed to be a collision. And Hangman Page, but that wasn't Punk's doing. Page was supposed to have a promo on collision, but it got moved. And, like, apparently, Punk, after hearing the accusations against him that he was the reason for it, reached out to Hangman to be like, that wasn't me, man, my bad. Um, also with Nemeth, I guess, the rumor was that um, the two discussed it in the hallway. It was an argument, and they ended up shaking hands. Yes. Um, but I think the Jack Perry one, it seemed like, based on the way I read it, most of the people were on Punk's side because it had to do with Perry Safety. wanting to use real glass in a segment. Yes, and Punk said, that's not what we do here. 
We got to work safe, yada, yada, yada. And he's right. I don't disagree with him. Right. Lacey Evans is out of WWE. I forgot Lacey Evans was even in WWE. There you go. Oh, so she's not going to be one of the names you say then. Yeah. There is a... Um, hmm? Oh, I didn't know if you were going to talk about Jay or not, but keep going. Jay. Uso. Oh, what? Taking time off? Yeah. Yeah, and he quit. Quit WWE, but he's just, he's on like an extended leave or something. I think he was working on an injury. Yeah. You think he's what? I think he was working through an injury and now he's taking time off for it. Yeah, the rumor I read was that it's going to be a six a six month period of time off, which I guess I I don't know that would put him on the road to WrestleMania when he comes back and um probably build up to a Jimmy J match at Mania. Probably. Yeah. Uh, there isn't. Documentary dropping on September 13th on Netflix about Ohio Valley Wrestling. OVW is where a lot of the 20 teens names, late to, late 2000s names came from. Your Shelton Benjamins, your Brock Lesnar's, your Dave Batista's, your John Cena's. All young versions and of them. Randy Orton's all at the same time. Yeah, all, all at the, the same, same time. Class. Same class. The five guys. Uh huh. Uh, they are that, featured that, in the documentary. That's fucking ridiculous. Oh yeah. Uh, that's like the Elway to Marino draft class of quarterbacks. Uh, are you talking about the sports ball? What? Are you talking about the sports balls? Yeah. Um, I got the reference, but I don't know if our nerds pay much attention to football Kyle I uh, okay. I I I'm gonna watch it and yes you are right that that amount of talent is like ridiculous yeah Tommaso Ciampa has been looking for his best friend and posting missing signs all over WWE events and his local neighborhoods searching for his buddy Johnny Gargano and if you Kyle if you haven't seen any of these things they're adorable and I can't wait for DIY to get involved in the tag scene on Raw the last bit of news I have before a little top three action with Kyle. Uh, Edge wrestled his last match with WWE the other day. The last match on his current contract, as he would note. He has not re-signed a contract with them. And I'm thinking, having listened to the Edge and Christian podcast for the years that they did it, they'd always stated that they wanted to end their careers together the same way that they got into the business. Christian is currently under contract with AEW. I wouldn't be shocked if Adam Copeland shows up somewhere along the lines anytime soon um, in AEW to either have a quick feud with Christian and then team up or however they do it, but I can see that happening. Also, uh, Edge would state in an interview that his contract technically isn't up until September. I call bullshit. I think he's showing up on Sunday. Um, yeah, it's quite possible. Um, my only thing is, does what what if does he just show up as Adam Copeland? Because he doesn't have the benefit of keeping his name right. No, but he could be, instead of Adam Edge Copeland, he could be Adam Bono Copeland. Yeah, that's funny. You know what would be even funnier? Is if his first feud with alongside Christian was with the Butcher and the Blade. Yeah. Then it'd be Edge versus the Blade. Yeah. Yeah. 
That'd be great. Those jokes were equally funny. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to argue that. <laughs> All right, before we started uh, today, I messaged Kyle and was like, hey, uh, who do you think are the top three most important acts in their respect, their respective companies in AEW and WWE? And Kyle being Kyle was like, well, are we talking about uh, male and female? Or are they getting their own? Kyle's like, I'm probably going to have to do extras, which I figured he would. Well, you, uh, well, so you never really confirmed, are we doing three male and three female for each, or no? No, I just figured okay. you rank, okay. like, most important acts. Doesn't matter gender, doesn't matter if they're a tag team, it, it does doesn't matter. W, WWE WWE is harder for me. But it yeah, was it was fun. it was for me too. I could not think of a female talent. I had to do four names for really? AEW. Uh, I'll okay. say this because I would have if this was a year ago, I would have said Bianca Belair easily. But since WrestleMania with Bianca, it's been downhill. Yeah. I. Don't I think Charlotte Flair is overrated? So I wouldn't pick her. Are we her. starting with WWE? You might, start with there? might as well. I'm just giving yeah. you like why I, I couldn't find a female because they don't they don't produce them strong enough, right? Yeah, they they're very start and stop, and they they tend to like just drop the fucking ball. That's true. So my top three acts. The most important acts in WWE to date. Dominic Mysterio. Dominic okay. Mysterio is the most overheal that they've had in that company in a long time. And that's not because they wrote it like that. It's just people love to fucking hate that kid. Yeah. Love it. And he's also coming uh, along. He's also good at leaning into it. He's huh. just, like, naturally good at it. Yeah, right. Like, the whole scenario with him is, is outstanding. Next up would be the Usos. The Usos are by far the best tag team in that company. Yes. And the work they've been doing over the last, like, fucking three or four years of the Bloodline stuff has been incredible. And to that extent, I say the third person that I have listed is Paul Heyman. Without Heyman, Roman's heel turn would have never gotten over as well as it did. Despite the fact okay. that everybody wanted it. Yeah. Well, you're right. You're right. <laughs> and that, those, are my, those are my three for WWE. What do you got? I agree with the Usos. They have to be in there. They have to be in the top three. Yeah. Um, I will give um, my honorable mention to Rhea Ripley. Um, and then I guess for my other two, I will say, and, and these are not in any particular order for me, but I will say... Uh, Kevin Owens' ability to work with anybody, um, even though he's not, like, dynamic on the mic, his microphone work is so different from the rest of that company that it makes him stand out in a way where it's equally impressive. His, his body type and his ring work are different enough from everybody else where it makes him stand out. And he can have good matches with literally anybody on the roster. But, He's been consistent. But is he important enough? I think so. I don't. You don't think he's important to the company? No. That's weird. He has done nothing to drive anything that's been going on in that company in the last year. Have they used him? Yes. He had a couple world title shots. He had the shit with Sammy and the bloodline. But again, that falls on the majority of the bloodline. And I would have put Sammy Zayn on the list had they completely not just put him and Kevin in the tag titles and fucking push yeah. them off to the side. Right. Um, and then the last one, I would say, and this is kind of only because I don't want to have the same names that you have, is um, is 
is um, as as much as we don't like what it is, he is over, and it, it's you can't deny that Seth Rollins is over. You also can't deny that he is he's he's the he's what I think a lot of people want Roman Reigns to be in terms of work, not in terms of character, um. not in terms of like stature in the company, but in terms of showing up to work, putting it in, and consistently giving, like he he basically holds that company down week to week in terms of segments on TV. It's like him in the bloodline. I'll agree with you, but the reason I say he's not important because if he was that important to them with all the things that you just said. He would have been the one to take the fucking titles off of Roman instead of having a belt created for himself. But no one's been that important. That's what I mean. And neither one of us listed Roman. No, because it's... So what, it's I think that's it's, more of an indictment of the company it, than a statement about the wrestlers in the company. Right, because it's the people that have been around Roman that have made it all work. Not that he's not a good, like talker as a heel or anything like that but if it wasn't for his interactions with the Usos, if it wasn't for Paul Heyman, if it wasn't for Sami Zayn there would be no Roman to the extent that he's been right. over to AEW uh, my fourth spot went to Tony Storm Okay. she was a transitional champion that they needed also, if you look at the group that she's in, I love Soraya, but she's doing nothing, really. It's still, you know, still got some rust on speaking and in the ring. Understandable, she's been out for years, the whole neck thing. Not putting that on her, but that takes her out of being important. And honestly, as much as I love Ruby Soho, Tony's better. And the shit she's been doing the last couple weeks with the backstage promos, where her character seems to be like this washed up 40s actress that she's pulling off has been awesome. Great character work. She's fantastic in the ring. And again, she's been someone they've been able to lean on. Now, my main three just But she hasn't been she hasn't has she even well, I guess she was given a title shot, right? She just lost. Yeah. She has to get the title back. Yeah. Uh F T R. AEW, when it first started, was priding itself on being a a tag team company. And then it kind of fell off. And FTR took their leave of absence for a while, and they came back. And they've brought, you know, they came back, took the titles, and they've put them back in the spotlight. And I appreciate that. I also appreciate how open they are about their love of wrestling, so much so that it becomes a detriment for them at times. You don't think that, um, which I'm gonna call it, um, the, you don't think the acclaimed kept the tag titles relevant? I think the acclaimed did a great job and they were a homegrown act that got over. Uh, and dude, we were, we still scissor. Like, it's awesome and everything. But if I'm looking at the importance of a team, they would have kept the titles on the acclaimed if they didn't think that it was going to start to fizzle out like it did. And they well, knew... you could just say the same thing about Tony Storm. What? Well, you just listed that if she was that important, they would have kept the title on her. Well, they needed to put. She was a transitional champ. She took over when Thunder Rosa got injured. She carried the division for a bit and then dropped the title to someone else. She was there when they needed her to be, and the, but she's still been prominent in the spotlight there. The acclaimed, they moved, they moved, the acclaimed, the problem for the acclaimed was, who were they feuding against? Because that's when the tag division looked like shit. They were, their biggest feud was the guns. Yeah. And right now, we're heading into the largest sellout in England in Wembley Stadium 
biggest box office for this company and who's headlining the tag division, FTR and the Young Bucks, the way it should right. be. Uh, next up for me is MJF. Okay. He... He's probably... Their top draw. Probably? Yeah. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Okay. Even, even though he's... Even though he's a heel champion. People wanted him to win that title in the first place. He won it. They are eating up the whole him and Adam Cole thing. Right. And despite what he pulled last year, he's been a company guy. Which is weird to say. Yeah. But I think he had a point. You know, he was one of the one of the originals, and he wanted to be treated the way he should be treated. I have no problem with that. And the last one on my list is Darby Allen. Darby is probably the Darby's probably the most improved wrestler in that entire company. Yeah, he went from being the dude that throws himself around, not being able to talk, teaming with Sting being relevant because he was teaming with Sting, getting really good on the microphone, having a really good back and forth with their top draw in MJF, to now not only still doing stuff with Sting and having their shit go on with whoever the fuck they were wrestling, um, he's doing the whole mentor role now to Nick Wayne. Yes. Which, that means that man is two segments a show. Two different storylines a show. And there's no one else in the company who's doing it. That's I, I understand your argument. I just don't see how it fits in with the rest of your arguments. But I understand it. Um, like as a standalone. Because so he's a draw to a certain portion of the audience, but he's nowhere near he's 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 definitely not a top five draw overall for that company. I beg to differ. I don't. I don't think he is. I think. Um, I don't think the Bucks and Kenny are. Um. Okay. So. Right. So. Um. I would say, yeah, I contemplated putting him on my list, but I didn't because um, I think my list has to be um, what there's like the importance in the company is not just like I'm, I'm not thinking about like necessarily what they're currently doing on TV, but what the obvious plans are for these people going forward. Right. So like, MJF is obviously like my number one because not only is he the champ and he gets segments every week, but yeah. he does. He he went from doing the Roman Reigns thing where he like or the Brock Lesnar thing where like sometimes he wouldn't be on TV, sometimes he'd be on TV and not wrestle for weeks, um, and he was still relevant and still a major draw for the company. Um, but now he is wrestling he's doing mic segments and wrestling segments and he's gotten over both as a heel and a face in the company without ever fully embracing being a face in the company which is just fucking nuts um i would throw out adam cole because of the plans that they obviously have for him going forward um whether or not they actually go with the reunion of the kingdom remains to be seen. But like, if they do that, which it looks like they're definitely going to do. If they don't um, put the belt on Cole on Sunday, it'll be 
one of the biggest mistakes the company's made. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think he's going to win. So I think he has to be he has to be in this category. Um, but the thing is, if he's going to be in another group again, it makes him look like he can't do anything without a crew behind him. Um, well, it depends on the crew. Because if he's the only one that's really, like, winning, and he's the clear-cut leader, then I don't think it really tarnishes what he's doing at all. I don't want to see him attached to anybody else. Again. I mean, I I definitely think that they're going to do that, though. Um, oh, I know they're going to do it. I'm unless just they do, unless they do a swerve and it's MJF who has who had the kingdom on, with their eyes on Adam Cole the whole time. I mean, that's fine if that's if that's how he loses because MJF is going to run the kingdom and they all turn on. Cole, then that's fine. I can accept that. But, like, the, they painted themselves in a corner by letting the MJF Cole thing go on too long. Um, and I would, I would throw it, like, I would throw it as much as it pains me to say it. Um, the fact that they gave him his own fucking show, that he's basically in charge of writing, rostering, uh, the fact that he's still allowed to carry around a championship that he technically never lost, and the fact that he's clearly a top two draw still for the company. It's like him and MJF, pretty obviously, I think. CM Punk is obviously very important, not only to their ratings, but to Tony Khan. Like, the, well, the reign that he's been given are kind of fucking Tony. ridiculous. What? That's a clearly to Tony, because he didn't fire him. Clearly, clearly to Tony. Um, but yeah, I mean, but what you said before, I agree with in terms of like, uh, Kenny and the Bucks not being the top drawers of the company anymore. Like I would say it's, it's hard to, it's hard to list anybody that's in the Blackpool Combat Club, um, because they are who they are. But like, I would say MJF and Punk. Moxley, Adam Cole, and then I don't even know who I would put five. I I guess I disagree with with Adam Cole, and I love Adam Cole. I just I don't think he's that important to them. Well, who do you think is a bigger draw in the company than him, though? Bigger draw? Yeah, money wise. Punk. That's I would say. I would say Punk, MJF, Moxley. I mean... Jericho? Uh, I would, still? No, but I would say Brian Danielson. Well, that's what I was saying. I said BCC originally together. Right. But... I yeah, mean, I if they didn't fuck up Jay White, I'd say Jay White. Yeah. But... That's a that's a wrap on this show. They got they got thirty seven minutes. That's all they're getting out of it. Yep. All right. As always, if you like what you hear, you can like us on Facebook dot com slash nerdies. Follow us on Twitter at nerdies. Email us at nerdies dot and check out nerdies dot com. While you're there, spend some money by heading over to nerdies dot myspreadshop dot com. Buy cool stuff. If you're watching the video of this, Joe's rocking some of it. Decade of Distraction t-shirt and hat. You can also go to can'tstopthedropedrop.myspreadshop.com to support my other podcasts, Wares, and Mike's other artwork on really cool Disney slash theme park related items. Halloween shirts are coming soon. I'm very happy to announce that uh, this is this. One of my favorite things Mike has ever told me about was a what if story he had written for Marvel. But I'm not going to get into all the details just in case one day it does happen. But a t-shirt version of this thing is coming to fruition on that shop. And I I know I will be getting 
one for myself. Also, sinfulcreationsbyjustin.com. That's C-I-N-N-F-U-L, creationsbyjustin.com. Get your sweet treats from me. It's worth it. It's food for the rich, priced for you pores. Uh, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, Nerdities, on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Nerdities, where we will be dropping new content. Hit that subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified when that new content comes out. There is rumblings of a live show. There's not rumblings. Uh, There's not there, rumblings. It's confirmed, <laughs> bitch. On September 19th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, YouTube.com slash Nerdities. Be there, motherfuckers. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Subscribe yeah. to us. Hit that bell. Mm. Be part of this live show. Yeah. Aggressive, Joe. I love it. Making my uh, fucking nipples hard. Just peed myself. <laughs> Do I usually say it? I don't remember if I usually say it. I don't yeah, say yeah, it. You usually say it. You idiot. I can pull that out. I don't know if I'm on myself. Okay. Huh? Hi. We did that tonight. We made that man proud. So this doesn't end tonight. This does not end tonight. As long as this company's around, as long as I'm around, and I know the rest of you will be here. We're going to do that every time.